Well, here we are, down the river. Massive, massive Belgian linen, white prime this time. Buckets and tins of oil paint, all ready to go. Got the cartridges, got a fantastic subject. It's been a while since I've painted a real big one out on location like this down on the river. So excited, can't wait to get stuck into that chunky stuff. Look at that. Now I'm just gonna start blocking in. Okay, so I reckon just a few thin lines. It's a little come out to about here. Yeah. Just gonna get the idea of what I'm doing, so that'll go top of the tree line will be about there. That headband will come through about here. Just feel my way at the moment. Don't have to be exact, it's just to get a general vibe of what's going on. And that there, about here, yeah, that'll be about there. Looking about right. Let me have a look, eh? Somewhere in there. Scoop down that way a little bit. out there, that little, it's about right. And then we'll come up, that'll be about there, down there today, and up that way like that, nice. So basic flows coming in and around. It's not too bad, it's pretty much what I want. Just feeling in a few of the major shapes. Not getting too locked in in anything at the moment. Nice pattern, irregular pattern flowing through the picture. Yeah. It's looking pretty good. Just moving things around, just working it out until I feel like it's all, all how I want it. I just feel a little bit of blue shadow there. Got some nice blue shadows from the gum trees. Those birds are great, aren't they? Nice shadows from the gum trees just chuffing out into the water, giving a bit of a feel of composition on the side there, it's nice. All right, well that's kind of blocked in. Now what I'm gonna do is get some of these darkest darks. I'm gonna go for some alizarin crimson, maybe a bit of viridian green. That always makes a nice dark. Slightly red, red dominant. This doesn't need too many darks, just a few darks here and there. And the rest will be more of the middle tones. It's the middle of the day and there's the light's almost directly behind us looking that way. There's not a lot of shadow, but the shadow there is, is quite dark. Yeah. Maybe just a little bit of the Viridian Green and Elizabeth Crimson, just a little bit over here too. All right, now I'll go for some, let's try some phthalo blue and magenta. The magenta will really knock it back and turn into a beautiful purpley mauve color. So that's magenta, phthalo blue. Go for a bit of burnt sienna and knock back the chromatic saturation. More magenta. Okay, so we need to go darker than that. So we'll go for some more burnt sienna and more magenta. Less white. It's not bad, but it just needs to be slightly more earthy dominant. So we'll go for the burnt siennas. Maybe a bit of red. That red's a nice color. Put 
that on. More magenta, a bit of white, magenta. Just going to get a bit of ultramarine blue I've decided because that phthalo is alright with magenta but ultramarine blue makes an absolutely beautiful colour when it's uh, straight into the shadows like that. We'll just put that on there. We'll just try that, see what it goes. Ultramarine blue, that's a very clean, lovely colour. Yeah, that's nice. Bit of white with that. Ultramarine and magenta. Bit more magenta, a bit more white. That's nice, yeah. So I'm just going to paint all the shadow in here of this bank and then put the light over the top of it. A bit more white, a bit more ultramarine blue. Bit more magenta, just darken the value off. Use some of that other stuff, the phthalo stuff, mix it with it. It's kind of cool, yeah. Pull that through. Bit more white, bit more blue, cool it off as it goes back. Lovely. Put that in there. A little bit of a chuffing over there. Get that up in there. That's nice. Can't have to get a little clamp on that, she's making a bit of a noise. That's alright for that shadow bank. Now I'll introduce some greens and whatever else as well. I'm just going to stand back and have a quick look. Viridian green, burnt sienna, more viridian green, a little bit of white, a bit of yellow ochre thrown in, let's have a look. What do we got? Pull that in, put in the shadows in first, and then I'll just add a bit of blue as it goes back. Once I've got the shadows in, Put the light over the top of it. A bit of green, right? Viridian green, maybe a twang of magenta, a bit of white, more viridian green, more magenta. Some of those blues dragged over to lighten the value. It's gotten cooler. further as it goes back into here. Okay, and there's some of those lighter values back here too. Just because you can see through, there's got that layer of foliage, but just behind it, there's a little bit more behind it again. Okay. Right. What I might quickly do is get some of that sky and use the white, plenty of white. Going to use a little bit of the phthalo blue again and the yellow ochre down lower. Yellow ochre, buckets of white. A little bit of the ultramarine because that phthalo is very, very, very strong indeed. It dominates everything. So in some ways you need to knock it back. A little bit more red in the form of magenta and a bit more yellow ochre to give it more of an earthy feel. Let's just knock the chromatic saturation back a bit. Stick that in. A 
a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit shining through here. Oh, I just never got that value right. All right. Go up a layer. A bit more of the blues, phthalo and ultramarine to strengthen her up. Less white. Nice rich blue there. Pretty and green. Just gonna change tack for a minute. Burnt sienna. Pretty and green. Just gonna paint a few of the shadows of this gum tree on the other side here. Yellow ochre, pretty and green, burnt sienna. Yeah, stick some of those darks in there. Right. That's good. into this. Stick the blues in, we'll go for some more thalo and ultramarine and white. A bit more ultramarine as it goes further up. A bit more ultramarine and magenta to give it that reddish kind of colour. Gonna make it super blue because it is a lovely day today and that beautiful dark blue really Jumps and pops, so I'll throw that in. Really sets it up for a bright, sunny landscape, Australian landscape. Lovely stuff, look at that going on. A bit over there, ooh, that's nice and dark, isn't it? Ultramarine, magenta, white, ultramarine. Getting even dark with less white as we go further up. More ultramarine, more magenta. That's a lovely colour. Well, that wind's starting to kick in, yeah. Don't matter, we've got the plain air beast here that'll block the wind, no worries. They're all nice and chunky style. Beautiful deep blue sky. If I can reach, there we go. Lovely stuff. It's going on beautifully. Look at that. Let's keep it on going. Plenty to do. Plenty of coverage to be made here. Let's just blend some of those two together. Little Mark's big knife, broken colour. Pulling the ochres into the, the ochres, into the ultramarines and whatever else. Slowly gradiating the sky up. Trying not to touch the dark too much at the moment. Don't want to smudge that too much, we'll get stuck into that later. Maybe that can go down there. Wipe that. Blend, blend, blend. Chunky style. Lovely stuff. That's looking good. All right, let's get in there, it's blending. Now next, get some water in and get some light colors on those trees. Okay, here we go then. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Some of those blues can go in. Viridian green. Trying to mix up the colour of that water. So we've got burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green. I think it needs a bit more yellow ochre and burnt sienna today. It's got that vibe about it. Just 
have a look. Somewhere along those lines, there's going to be plenty of the brew mixed up, I'll tell you that much. Because we've got a lot of water today. Put that on. Yellow ochre, bits of the blue, pretty and green burnt sienna, more yellow ochre. More burnt sienna. Slab it on, big chunks here and there going on. This is what it's all about. Plenty of painting, big chunky style. Yellow ochre, pretty and green, white. Yellow ochre, more yellow ochre. Burnt sienna, that is a brew and a half. Slabs of the stuff. What do we got here? Let's have a look. It's a lighter value, because I want it to go a little bit lighter. Just up in here, just underneath the bank seems to be a slightly lighter tone. There's a bit of the bank reflecting down, I guess. Now bring it down. More burnt sienna, more yellow ochre, more red and green, less white. Just want to darken the value again a bit more. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Tons of it on. I need to do. Chunk her on, chunk her on. Big and beautiful, look at those trees. They are the bee's knees. Absolutely beautiful, eh? I'll so we'll just keep paddling along here. Kind of right, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, pretty and green, pretty and green, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, tiny twang of that blue in there to lighten the value a bit. There's going to be blues coming down as well, there's a lot of that green, there'll be a bit of blue. Let's get the paint on first. Right up in the foreground, it's a bit earthy brown and white. But you can see the bottom here, it's just a little bit more like that colour. Just gonna add that in. Nice and neat down to the bottom. Like that. Bring that across. the paint on. Little shadow kicking in there. Stick that one in in a minute. There's some more paint on. Mix up some blues here, light blues. Let's just have a look. I reckon I'll put a bit of blue in here. Slabbing it on thick because I want it to be all chunky style. Here we go, a little bit more ultramarine dominant. This is phthalo blue as well. Bit of there, bit of that there, bit of that there. And have a little bit run through here. A bit more going through here, of course. A little bit down in the distance there. Mix that paint in. Just 
lovely chunky stuff. A bit more ultramarine. Ultramarine. Lighten the valley a bit. That goes on. Beautiful. Green sienas and blues. More blue. Just gonna darken this corner off here. There's a nice shadow in the water from the trees. Just stick that in. Make it nice and neat on the edges. Something like that. Want that clean. Let's bring that down to the bottom. Nice and neat and lovely. There you go. Alright, got all that blocked in. Now I'm going to put some of the light source on these trees. So we just keep on going. There's so much to do. More of that yellow oakery type of stuff, pretty and green. I'm gonna have to get more yellow ochre out, I can see it. Where is it? Mm, all right, here we go. A bit more yellow ochre. Didn't want to bore you showing you all the yellow ochre stuff. You've seen me get the stuff out of the cartridges before, so just did a quick flick and got the yellow ochre on. Burnt sienna. Yellow ochre. What have we got here? Let's just have a look. Yeah, it's pretty good. A bit more burnt sienna in it. It's a bit more of a brown today. Just lightly touch that on. Lightly touch that on. As it goes back, it goes a little bit more magenta. I'll stick a bit more of this on first. Just lightly touch it on. Letting the shadows show through too. It's actually a little bit red. There's some red in the twigs of the trees, like you've got the branches of the gum tree and in the actual twigs themselves, or the branches, are slightly red dominant. And that actually looks great, so we'll go with that. Let's lighten that value as it goes back a bit. Lightly touching. Yeah, let's cool it off a little bit with some blues. Just going to knock up a bit of magenta, light magenta -y colour here with the blues. Very light. If I knock it with that, it'll really start to take these back. Pretty and green. A bit of that. It really starts to send it off into the distance. Lightens the value and takes it right back. Changes the chromatic saturation, makes it look more like it's part of the distance. And those ones back behind there are all part of the distance too. Alrighty. Lighten some values here with some yellow ochre and white. Nice grasses and stuff on the top here. Some are a little bit warmer than that, a bit of red. Like that. Okay. What are we doing next? We're going to go for some more yellow ochre, stronger version of burnt sienna. Rudy and green. Less of the whites and less keyed off because I'm going for this stuff here which is closer. Put that on, needs a bit more white to lighten the value. A bit more red and green. Just pull it on. 
getting rid of the white. Yellow ochre, blue and crimson to warm it up a bit. Oh yeah, one sticking out here a bit. Oops. Bit of sky blue with it. Just take that up to the edge there. Little headland jutting out there. Nice clean knife, just pull through over the top of some of these bits to take away. Some of the white and soft, <coughs> excuse me, and soften the edges. Pull through, soften the edges. Give me a paper towel. Wipe it clean. Wipe it clean. Through, wipe it clean, wipe it clean. Pull that through, wipe it clean. Wipe it clean. Just bringing them all together, softening it up. All right, well, we've kind of roughly got those values and colors here and tones. Now what I do is, Put some light source on this bank here because that's still all in shadow and obviously out there. And let me just shut this. Obviously, obviously, the bank's light and shadow, so we'll do the combination of both. We'll go the white, burnt sienna. A little bit of those blues can get mixed up in it, yellow ochre, because I've got to key it off to some sort of greyish colour anyway. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna. A bit more burnt sienna. Maybe a twang of magenta to help warm it up. It's gotten a few too many of those sky blues thrown in, even though I did want them. A bit more white. What colour have we got? Yeah, it's more yellow ochre dominant and white. It's the colour of the sunlight, the beautiful sunlight. Let's just have a look. Hmm, it needs to be slightly warmer than that, so we'll go for some magenta. Too bad. Let's just have a look. It's good. Just slightly yellow ochre. So I've made up a kind of earthy greyish colour. Seems to be working. A bit more white in that mix. Light in the value. A bit more white again. Let's take it down.
going all right. Bit of that, hang on. Chunky, chunky style, I'll tell you what. I'll clean some of this up. Clean some of that. Beautiful light and shadow. Now what have we got here? A big tree here. I'll scrape some of this back. Gonna be a beautiful big tree trunk there. In a similar sort of value. More yellow ochre with those greys. Knife on edge. Put her up. So, drag that. Through there, white, yellow ochre. Get that on, chunky, chunk, chunk. Pull some of these down, get some of that reflection coming down. All right, well things are starting to come along, but I've gone for some CAD colors, CAD yellow, cat orange and the reason I've done that is just to get a little bit more sting for some of these light sources where we've got the light on the bank and whatever else just want it to be nice and bright like so really jump out Whoop, hang a sec that was lovely but it's not the value we're after today let's just pull it through that way that's it a little bit of that yellow left underneath just to glow through. That can come up like so. The headland out there. And this goes here. It's taking a bit of paint off here at the moment. slightly darker on the water's edge where the wet where it's wet sand like that now we've got a lovely yellow ochre viridian green burnt sienna lovely shadow on some dead tree that's in the water just here and the shadow is quite green because the water's green, so it's reflecting back up and creating a kind of darkish, greenish sort of shadow. Just go a little bit grey with some of these greys that I've got here, not too much though. That can be there. And that tree's going to come out like so. Take it out there, I reckon, which means that water will come down to here, bring that water down, and then stick this trunk, which is lying on its side, a bit more white with that mix, just jutting out into the water. that way. A little bit of green foliage here. Pull that down into 
there for now. Let me have a look. All right, let's get some of these sky blues and introduce them. Where are we going here? Into the water. there. Start softening a few more things in a minute but I'm just trying to get the colours in, just the basic shapes and values in and I'll start softening and doing and adding extra draftsmanship and whatever. Starting to feel like the actual composition is appearing which is great. Just got to keep working around and around and around. Part here's not working, there we go, that's enough. All right, palette knife. Look at that blue, the magenta. Starting to jut out into the water itself now as the afternoon's kicking on. There's a little bit of blue coming like that, which looks good, I'm liking that. All right, a bit of cads with these whites. Start drawing a few trunks in. There's a nice, beautiful trunk just here somewhere. Where is it? Well, there's quite a few everywhere, but there's a particularly nice one just here. Knife on edge. One kicking in there. Big one coming down there. Reds, make some shadow down here. There's a bit of a darkness on the edge of it. A burnt sienna shadow on the back of this. This tree here. Take some of the paint off. Create the draftsmanship of that tree. A bit of white, half mixed. Knife on edge. Getting some real high key stuff just in there so the sun can shine. Drawing those trees with a knife on edge. Shadow here, it's just so the edges catching the edge. It's more the light's really catching the trunks here. But as you get further off to the edge, yeah, it's just catching the edges rather than straight on. There's a nice trunk here. Put some red into that. I want more of a grey sort of Australian sunlight grey-ish colour, sun bleached dead tr gum tree trunk just here.
Look at that nice reflection down there. Some slightly darker values. Shadow from that. There's a tree trunk lying in the water itself, just here. It's got a nice bit of shadow reflecting up like that in it. Drawing bits in, there's always so much to do in these big paintings. You just keep putting it in, keep on going. What else we got here? This one here. All right, we'll just keep moving around now. We're getting a big impression. Let's start putting some finer details to really crispen it up. Get the knife on edge high key colours, start drafting out a few shapes. In the easily seen important areas. A knife on edge, to create the illusion of detail. More of this, more of that. All right, things are really starting to get there now. Absolutely beautiful. It's all starting to get reeled in, not just blocked in, but also reeled in. Okay. So I'm just working on this water a bit. Just want to put a few more nice little bits of blue here and there. Where the light's hitting, looking around. So you get that beautiful cool sky in amongst the warm reflections of the colour of the water for itself is that green colour, but the colour of these trees are reflecting down in it. You get that warm and cool sitting on top of each other. Feel pretty happy with what's going on. This blue has receded right off into the distance. This darker value here has brought that up. Seems to be going well. This dead branch just in the fold, this dead tree trunk here lying here. It's got beautiful pale green reflections back in the shadow because the water's green. It's reflecting green light back up. It's looking good. Pretty happy with what's going on. Things are coming together. All right. Putting a bit of shadow on that. A shadow on that one. There we go, light and shadow, beautiful.
All right, well, I reckon we've got it. Got the big impression. Pretty happy with what's going on now. I really feel like I've captured that subject. I've put a lot of emphasis into this water because it's predominantly a foreground water with a little bit of stuff up higher in the distance, the headland and all jutting out. But in here I've made beautiful subtle marks, little ripples and little bits of light reflecting from the sky. And then you've got the reflection of the trees, reflection of the tree trunk, the whole lot just dancing around a little bit of the bottom in the foreground here where you can actually see into the water. And you can see the, the shore just here. Pretty happy with the way that shadow recedes, starts off dark over there and just gradually gets lighter as it goes into the distance. What I've done here is I've got the colour of the gum trees themselves, that beautiful kind of, uh, what would you say, almost like a khaki colour. But as they recede off into the distance, these little ones further away have got a bit more of the magenta mixed in with a bit of blue just to knock them back and send them off. Up here, really strong and tense against the Australian blue sky, almost an orange up here to really, because when you look up high, in amongst all those gum tree leaves and those fine red branches against the Australian blue sky. They really glow a strong complementary colour. So I've done that there. Happy with this beautiful subtle reflection of this dead tree trunk in the water. On the whole, a nice little balance. Why don't we get that camera off, come buzzing right in, so you guys can have a look, check out the technique, see what you think. All right, thank you.